What's up guys? Hope everybody is having a great holidays around this time of the season. I wanted to start off this video by saying that the whole process of me taking out the suspension will be posted in the description for the fact that it's it's a little bit of a long video so I didn't want to make it a lot more longer than it is. So if you need help taking out the suspension to take out the axle, go ahead and look at the description and they'll give you some more depth of how to how if to you're that. new to the channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button and with anybody else feel free to hit that thumbs up button also that'll help me out and hit that bell if you really like my content to be notified when my videos are coming out so so enjoy guys thanks okay guys so i took off the axle and it came out by itself i mean the the cup itself is our, it's still in the transmission casing right there. It's still stuck on there, so I gotta get a pry bar and get it out. But I, I didn't take it out like that. It basically just came out loose by itself. Now that guy was on the transmission, obviously. That guy was in there. So the trick to, these are pretty tricky to take out since the transmission case is wrapped around with the piece of metal right there so there's no way for you to put on a hook or something to pop out the uh, the axle so I started doing some thinking so I started doing some research on some tools that kind of had the idea of what I kind of was had in mind of of using so this pry bar set from Harbor Freight that I got for $6.99 plus tax I'll post a link in the description of the uh, part number, even though it's there, I'll, I'll still put it in the description. So it comes in a set of three. You have a big one, a medium one, and a small one. The one that I used was actually the big one. Um, the way I utilized it to pop out the axle was basically brought it underneath right here and it got me a way to kind of grasp it from from the uh, behind of the uh, of this cup right here. So basically grabbed it from this lip right here since we have multiple lips. And once I got some leverage, I managed to kind of pop it out. Now it didn't pop out completely. So in order for me to pop it out completely, it got me enough for it to actually snap out. Once I got it snapped out, I used a construction pry bar and that gave me more leverage to actually pop it out. So I used a combination of the two. I used this one from Harbor Freight uh, to snap it out and then to completely take it out, having more leverage, I used this guy. This guy right here doesn't have enough tension to actually pop it out or since it's really big or doesn't give you the leverage to pop it out and snap it out. So since this guy's a lot more skinnier to fit in, it gave, actually gave me the opportunity to do that. So before anything else, I recommend getting one of these guys pry bar set from Harbor Freight and that'll work out just fine. Followed by a construction pry bar, uh, you know, for you to take out nails and stuff. So that'll work perfectly fine. So we'll get to it and start rebuilding this side of the uh, axle, put it back together and uh, we'll start jumping on after that you know, prepping it to, to put on the boot. Now, when you take out the axle, just be very, very careful that they might have some spillage from the tranny fluid. So just be aware that you're gonna need some type of pan underneath the trans. Like clip this off, take it off, or you could ham smidge in a screwdriver right here, a very small flathead, and just move it around and eventually this will pop out for you to take out. But once you get to that and take off the boot, you could actually hammer out the outside cup. It'll come right out. So it's pretty easy. Um, basically just grab a sledgehammer and tap it and it should come right out. There's nothing retaining it except, you know, just a little bit of pressure through these, these joints right here. Next, what we're gonna do is take off these retaining, uh, retaining clip that's right here. As you can see, there's two small holes if the camera could focus in right there right in between you can see a notch in between right there too that's basically a small space that the retaining clip has but those two holes you basically need a special tool to basically you know pry off just like that so we're going to get to it and take off that retaining clip just like i'm that. actually going to take advantage of taking off 
completely this boot right here. So I'm just gonna grab my dikes, flip this guy off, just like that. Grab a razor blade and just razor blade it off. Should be easy. The fact that it's nice and brittle, soft already. That's the reason why it came out ripping in the first place so all right so grab your mallet these guys come off don't worry about it we could uh, put it back on without with these just press them in by hand so it's no big deal this hammer right here this guy off take this guy off just whack it very sections that. Other side. Well, that took a while, but it's off. Let's clean it off. Now, since it's made out of pure steel, there really is, <clears throat> there's a couple scratches here and there, as you can see, but nothing really was being nicked. And damaging as you can see so don't worry of actually uh, thinking that you're gonna damage this right here because you really won't next we're gonna take off this boot to do both of them if your boot is actually torn up from the outside you're just better off doing it this way because this if you're just gonna replace this boot right here it's actually more harder um, to take off this side end of the axle because there's more retaining clips right here so just do both of them at the same time and doing it this way doing the the inner and then the outer a lot more easier than just tackling this guy we basically just grabbed a screwdriver and jammed it in right here i used a small one first a thin one followed by a thicker one and just cut it off so that's what i did on this side right here and since i'm at it so just do it on this side too Grab your razor blade. Grab trash can. Take apart this guy. Take off the boot. Throw it in the trash. And clean as much as you can. Put this grease. Because you want to put fresh grease in here. This guy must be nice and clean right here on the surface because this is where we're going to put our clamp. So try to clean it up as much as possible. And uh, I'll go ahead and grab your boots. So go ahead and grab your outer boot kit. This is your inner, shaped differently, and this is your outer. So we're gonna do the outer. Go ahead and get this guy inserted. Just like that. Flip it around, make sure it fits first. Just like that. And sure enough, it does fit. And go ahead and take it off again and we're gonna go ahead and insert the grease right here grab your grease just cut the edge and go ahead and just pour it in there's already in some there so don't worry about getting all of it inside if you can't so got most of it in go ahead proceed getting the boot back on flush it in you can feel right here in the last slip where it hits so that basically wraps the story go ahead and grab your clamp that got provided in the kit that grab your special tool start bending it Tight. Make sure everything's flushed. That. Tight. Bend it. The other side, you do the same thing. There's a notch right here, a stopping point, in which you'll guide yourself where to put the boot at. Now, before anything else, don't forget to put in your clamp first because I had to take it apart 
and put in the clamp so don't forget to do that first and then put in your boot next what we'll do is put in this guy right here make sure it's nice and clean clean of debris no rocks no pebbles no nothing no dust so you can slide it back in nice and smooth once you pop it back in just start whacking it and make sure your your mallet is nice and clean too so you won't jam in and debris of any sort in there I apologize for jumping way too quick on the other boot but the process is pretty similar installing the bands in the boot just be sure on the inner boot it has some grooves on the on the boot itself that it's supposed to be on the cup side and not on the on the uh, the rod side I would say so just be very sh sure which which boot goes where because the, the the boot that has the indentations and then and the grooves and everything is actually for the inner side and the other one will be for the outer side so just be careful with that and if you need help using that special tool for the clamp i'll put a a link on the description also how to use a special tool um, you might not use the special tool for the fact that there's two types of bands supported by cv axle boots there'll be a pinch kind and once you use a tool to pinch the the bands or the the band that that I actually got supplied with so just be aware of that which which type of band you get because there's two the pinch kind and the ones that you actually have to twist and which I'm actually doing okay so now that we get most of this I tried flushing it this guy all the way in and which it seemed like it couldn't go anymore so I just went ahead and uh, Put in your clip right here so just I forgot to make a reference of where it was so that was my mistake so just make sure where exactly where it was but um, it seems like it, it's going in as much as it can inside here so just make a reference point so how far it went in so what we're gonna do is I already cleaned out this guy as much as I can so what we're gonna do is put these guys right in Put these bearings inside. Make sure they're nice and clean, free of debris, one by one. All you have to do is basically just tap them in. Nothing crazy. So, just like that. Pretty easy. Next, we're gonna do the, uh, the grease. Clean your edges, insert it whenever you're ready to go, just like that. Move around the boot so it can flush in. So the driver's side axle seal is a lot more harder to take off with the screwdriver, even though I have one that's bent. As you can see right here, this one's a little bit bent. So I managed to pry that one off the axle seal from the passenger side pretty easily with this, but on this side it's a little bit more harder. So what you're gonna need also is this uh, Harbor Freight seal seal puller. I'll put the part number in the description, but just for reference, that's it right there. So we're gonna go ahead and give this a whirl. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pull the seal. Just remember that make a reference of how deep that seal is inside the transmission casing. So for visual point that there's a second dip right here. I mean, you, I, it's hard to point it at the same time while recording, but there's a dip inside there. I make myself a visual um, reference point. Once I take off the seal and put back the new one, I know exactly how deep I need to go without damaging it. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, proceed by taking off the seal. Got myself the tool, just basically insert it Try to hook it in and go ahead and just pry on it 
until it goes Be out. Be careful with yourself not to bang your knuckles as you're pulling this. And it came right out. Just like that. Pretty easy. Just be very careful. Clean all the debris that's inside there and uh, get ready to install the new one. This one didn't seem like it was leaking, but I mean, might as well do it since we're there just as a safe precaution. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, and install the new so one. So I have a whole bunch of shop towels right here. I just grabbed a uh, regular shop towel, disposable shop towel and uh, cleaned it up as much as I can. As you can see there, that's as clean as I would go. As you can see around all that dirt and debris that got collected with all that grease that got, you know, spud out from the boot. I'm basically gonna put everything back together and then once I'm done putting everything back together, put the wheels on, I'm gonna roll it out to the, to the driveway and jack it up again, take off the wheels again and go ahead and power wash everything so I could get all of that dirt and debris out because that's that looks really that that bothers me a little bit um, being a little bit OCD with it so I'm gonna go ahead and power wash it as soon as I'm done with everything and I'll post the links in the description but this is the part number for the left axle seal it was roughly $12 and some change at the dealership so it's OEM so if you guys want to order online, here's a part number for it, or you can just go to your local Toyota parts dealership store and uh, get yourself this seal. Right. I even here. grease it up for you. So you, as you can see, this grease is pretty much all smeared up, so they'll grease it up for you too. But just to uh, be on the safe side, we're gonna grab some multi-purpose grease and uh, grease it up a little bit more right here. just so you can condition it, make it last a little bit more longer. Just like that. All right, so I went ahead and put in the seal by hand first and make sure that you don't collect or touch any debris that's around it for it to contaminate. Proper seating of the seal on the transmission. So, we're gonna do our best to kind of push it in with our bare fingers first and then start tapping it That's in. That's pretty much as far as I could go with well, my I went bare ahead fingers. and went to the part Got myself some PVC pipe. It's two inch. I got five feet for seven dollars and some change plus tax. So this is it. This is the old seal. So basically the old seal is gonna rest right basically here. Basically you have more leverage to to kind of play with the seal with the tube being extended all the way over here. So basically you just grab your hammer and start punching in and guiding itself onto the transmission. And of course with your leg, you go ahead and make yourself more room and space to, to put in this pipe right here. And before you cut it, make sure you tap in the seal with the factory cut and not your cut because you're probably gonna have your cut just as bad as mine so I went ahead and just tapped it in with the factory now cut. as far as the seal you could tap in the seal with the hammer just be very very gentle while tapping the PCV uh, PVC pipe with the hammer just give it a couple taps here and there slowly and then check up on it and see how much you're actually pushing it towards the the transmission all right so we have our axle ready to go Basically, you're gonna put it in. Make sure you don't disturb the, the seal and you go as perfectly as smooth as possible inside the hole, twist it around. Okay, so you should have two clicks. The first click is to engage the axle going into the transmission. And then you should have a final click by just forcing inside there we go um, if you need to you could rotate it to have a little bit of leverage for that that clip to move around for it to engage inside um, so first click it's engaging inside the casing and then the second clip will 
go inside the transmission so just be aware of that and basically you should have it close to flush inside there so we'll continue and putting back everything together oh, I'm out of breath so we're gonna go ahead and put the this side of the axle onto the spindle and the hub uh, if, it, if you see that the hub is dirty which mine was full of grease and debris just go ahead and wipe it down with the rag and proceed of installing this guy onto here ah oh, fuck a little bit tough just move around the uh, the strut assembly watch your hands watch your knuckles watch your pinky because I did grab my pinky right now no big deal just a small little boost and then grab the control arm swing it down oh. I actually did it on the right side put in my pry bar and having the strut swayed to the left of me just like that so basically you don't have too much room to put in your your ball joint back in so there's this little notch right here that you can see coming down coming up to the knuckle right here this knot basically you put you lead this guy in through here and then right into the hole so it'll give you some levers to put it in otherwise you'll be fighting it so just a heads up for the that nut. you have your 19 wrench going down and you can put an 18 or 17 right here and just Give it a good snug. Don't be afraid also. And get to work. Now that we have the control arm in and stationed onto the, the hub assembly and the knuckle, what we're gonna do next, start putting on your nuts on the sway bar end link right here and on your tie rod end right here. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is do not play around with this tie rod as a way it once you take this tie rod out and you pull it down don't play with it leave it the way it is because if you actually rotate it counterclockwise or clockwise and put it back in you will mess up the alignment so the way that it sits down it comes down just leave it alone and let it be and don't play around with it so. just for reference right there otherwise you will mess with your alignment uh, the other thing is when you're putting in your sway bar end link, make sure the other side is jacked up also. Otherwise you're gonna be having trouble putting on your sway link. So just a heads up for that too. Go ahead and tighten down your your nuts, 17 mil, 17 mil, and 19 mil right at the ball joint. Sway link nut, don't be afraid to <clears throat> tighten it down nice and good. Same thing with the tie rod in, nice and good. <clears throat> as snug tight as you can. Don't be afraid to do a little bit of force to it. Um, these are suspension bolts, so it should be good. Nice and tight. Same thing with the ball joint. Once you snug up everything, including the tie rod end link, your tie rod end, and your ball joint nut right there, go ahead and add a cotter pin right there to the tie rod end, and then also on the ball joint. Once you have everything nice and together, and you want to refill your transmission again with transmission fluid, in which it's your choice exactly what you want to use. You could use the the one gear oil I actually do recommend and using is the uh, the weight 7590. What kind of brand do I recommend? Um, you could use Valvoline. Valvoline is pretty good. Or you could use Redline MT90. Um, you could do the com combination too. You could also use um, uh, I got some Lucas also. I did a com combination of Lucas and Valvoline. 
or you could do a combination of Valvoline and MT90 or just run MT90 himself itself so it's it's up to you guys everyone has their own different uh, cup of coffee type of flavor you know type of food that they desires to use so I'll leave it up to you guys what you want to use but as far as the weight I definitely recommend 75 W90 now when it comes to refueling your transmission um, I'll post a link in the description of how I did that again I want to keep it short on this video but towards the end of the video in the link in the description of how to replace the the axle seal on the passenger side there's a hex 10 bolt that pertains on on the in the front of the transmission so it's basically you know one of these big guys right here uh, it's a hex 10 you take that out that will be your fill plug and then there's at the very bottom the transmission there's a really really big bolt also that's a 24 mil bolt that you need to unloosen and drain out the oil once you have it nice and drained out, um, you could snug it back in, make it nice and tight. Don't forget to put, put a fresh new washer. And then where you took out your hex 10 bolt, you fill it in until it starts to ooze out. I would like to thank everyone who's been watching my videos and been supporting the channel by subscribing. So just want to give a huge shout out to every each one of you for the support so I greatly appreciate it and especially around the holidays we all as human beings need some type of support so that's basically one of the one of the greatest Christmas presents I could get is just your guys support so greatly appreciate it um, next video will probably be me I'm gonna be honest if since it is Christmas weekend I might not be doing a video on a POV point of view driving with the new tune and basically everything that I've done already so far throughout the year with this guy so what I'm actually I've already recorded myself doing the uh, the Holly two barrel carburetor accelerator pump diaphragm in which it was leaking on the Ford F-250 so I got that situated this past weekend so I might drop that video first but um, I'm to be honest with you guys, I, I mean, I don't want to lie to myself or shoot myself in the foot, but I might squeeze a POV video of this guy, but I'm, I'm not going to promise it. But definitely not this weekend, but next weekend, I'll do an upload of what I got performance wise on the car and what parts I have underneath the hood and all that. So I'll, I'll, I'll do a list of everything, basically. So again, Happy holidays guys, greatly appreciate it, and uh, hope you guys take care, be very safe, wear a mask, do what you gotta do, and uh, peace. See you guys later. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Happy holidays.